You are far from your post, Inquisitor. What brings you here? We are in a sanctum holy to Utica. There are others like it in service to the other gods. I come here often to pray for her counsel, and in this space I may be assured that she hears me. That woman sought only to destroy the foundations of peace and civility that my people sacrificed everything to build. It has many uses, but its purpose is to bring structure to the chaos that surrounds it. They are monuments to Woodica's greatest servants among my people. I hope to join them myself one day, but my work is not yet complete. The Inquisition was based on the need to cut the flesh from a rotting wound. What is a god? Hmm? A higher power? A rewarder of good deeds and punisher of the wicked? Something men can turn to in their darkest moments when their days seem only like bridges from one tragedy to the next. Our gods are all these things. We are in a sacred place within earshot of the gods themselves. This is not the time. You've been through much these past few months. You will return home and you will rest. When you feel you have recovered, you may rejoin us at the trials. The Inquisition is far from over, and I will have need of you. There are many who continue to spread the lies of the apostate. The Inquisition will not end until we have pronounced judgment on all of them. How did you find it? Another in a string of acts of petty defiance. For all her knowledge, she always preferred spite over reason. Then she should have obeyed. I ask one thing of all my followers. She was incapable. A waste of rare talent and intellect. What of your cohorts, then? They have followed you to their deaths. Is it loyalty that brings them here? Or is it as my agents suggest, that they have no direction of their own? You. You worshipped Aethus, did you not? Your spies are good. What gave me away? The cape? Yet when your god needed you the most, you chose your country. We were being invaded. Not by anyone who was acting like a god. Then I should think your hometown gave you a hero's welcome when you returned. Well, they made cake. And I think you can expect folks to get jumpy when the gods aren't there to reassure them. Maybe if they weren't all too busy trying to kill each other. The gods argue over how best to prevent Kith society from destroying itself. These disruptions would not be necessary were mortal instinct not so diseased. You have devoted yourself to studying the work of my people. Why? I thought your people had much to teach us. That we too could create great machines, improve our ships, make an empire as vast and impressive as yours ever was, built upon your secrets. And did you ever consider that these were things you were never meant to understand? That their comprehension is beyond you? You are living in the time of my people, Amawa. You owe them more than you will ever comprehend, and so it shall ever be. Greater civilizations than yours have attempted to reclaim what we buried. The greater their successes, 
the worse their fates in the end. I have seen to it. What of you, Orlan? My agents tell me you are far from home, both in distance and in years. Have your friends proven a worthy distraction from the pain of ostracism? Ostracism? Is that the name for the groin rash your mother gave me? Don't fool yourself, old man. You know nothing about me. Enlighten me, then. Is it Galloway you serve, or is it Wow? I do not serve Galloway. I am an instrument of his will. But such difficulty on the way. If you had only accepted that perhaps you were fit to serve neither god, just as you were unfit to serve your tribe, you might have saved yourself the trouble. Belittle my struggle at your own peril, Theos. I have been reforged by challenge and contest. Saved myself the trouble? Pfft, trouble, my friend, is what has made me strong enough to pull your lungs out through your colon. Yet I suspect you amount to little in your god's eyes in either case. You built a weapon that delivered exactly as promised. I served my goddess as you did yours. Yet the other builders were slain. Eleven of a dozen. Why not you? Were you somehow different? Redeemable in your god's sight? Whatever desire I had to be redeemed in her eyes was weakness. Purged by the Watcher's sight. Or was it merely that your goddess wanted you dead as well, and your delusions of importance prevented you from seeing the obvious? A whore's beguiling charms, nothing more. But the spell's broke now, Theos. The trial's over. I know friend from foe. And I've come here now to see a foe repaid. You were able to destroy a god because another god wished it. Without her hand to guide you, you could not strike at a god any more than you could strike the sky. You are impotent, and not just from the pox. You are far from home, dwarf. I knew my hunt would send me a long way from Masuk. It was a challenge I was glad to undertake for my village. A journey, then. It must be of some import to take you so far and to last so long. It's important to Masuk. And so it's important to me. You are here because you are lost. The gods cannot reach everyone, I'm afraid. May you fare better in your next lives. I gather you have had your soul awakened. Why else would you shadow my footsteps like some stray mongrel? You think I have something to offer you, but our business was concluded long ago. I answered your questions once. That your soul is not fit to accept the answers is of little concern to me. I lied to no one. Not to you, not to anyone. The gods are real. They are everything we need them to be, and the world is better for it. The spread of our faith ended many such atrocities. I do what I must to ensure it continues to do so. The heart of this country has skipped a beat, nothing more. I have done far worse. I plunged the peaceful kingdom of Telosus into civil war. I slew the monarch of Desantio, whose people never knew hardship under his rule, and replaced him with a cruel despot who brought them to ruin. When plague arrived at the great city of Arborensis, I saw to it that the cure did not. They piled their dead outside the city in heaps that rose above their walls. That's where you are mistaken. There was a time, back when your soul was still a shapeless mist, when the world believed only in false gods. Thousands of them. Gods that told them to take slaves. Gods that told them to make war upon their neighbors and devour the slain. Gods that told them to burn their children alive and cover themselves in the ashes as a sign of their faith. But all that changed when they learned of the true gods. Our gods. 
All those misshapen, bestial instincts melted beneath the radiance of our god's majesty. You could see it in their eyes. That dull emptiness replaced with the glimmer of a kindled spark. There is no false hope. Only hope for things that never come. Have you imagined this existence? The one the apostate would have created? We are not all so virtuous as she. Without our gods, the most wicked, the most tyrannical, they would take that power for themselves. But more than that, it would be a hollow existence. All mysteries forever unanswered. All purposes constructed from meaninglessness. No endings to bring closure. Only a wheel turning without mercy, grinding our spirits to dust. Telling yourself each day that what you do matters, that it isn't all for nothing, that the world is just. The apostate's world is built on believing lies. All I have seen, the millennia of experience. I will not be dissuaded from this course. This is the only way. We are all controlled by our own doubts. Better that we should be relieved of them. With your soul and thousands of others, I will see this world purged of its suffering. Hear me, Woodica. Your servant calls for aid. Grow up. 